In this video, we're going to talk about the Arrhenius equation. And what the Arrhenius equation is, is basically it's a quantitative way of looking at the relationship between temperature and the rate constant or the rate. So the Arrhenius equation is, uh, has the following form. And let me just be clear that this is a little k. So, um, you know, we're not talking about the equilibrium constant. We're going to learn more about the equilibrium constant in the next chapter. This is referring to the little k or the rate constant. And it says that little k is equal to a e to the minus e a over r t, where we have k being the rate constant A is what we call a frequency factor. And generally, this is not something that we worry about because it tends to factor out in most of the applications that we worry about. But it's a proportionality of the number of collisions at the activation energy. So it sort of gives a relationship between the number of collisions and the activation energy. That's what that is. And then we have R, which we remember. This is the gas constant. And for this one, we're going to be using 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. That's important. And we also have the temperature, T, which is going to be the temp in Kelvin. And that's important because we got to make sure that it matches with the, uh, act, the, the um, gas constant, which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And so the activation energy in this case is going to have units of joules. Um, so that's that's important because you may get an activation energy in kilojoules. In order to use it in here, you have to make sure that that uh, activation energy is in. So the activation energy is energy in joules. So we can actually reconfigure this a little bit uh, using log rules. If we take the natural log of both sides, we get the natural log of k is equal to the natural log of a um, minus. E A over R T. And I'm going to kind of separate that a little bit. It should be E A over R T, but I'm separating the T just to kind of demonstrate something. So, um, the, and the reason why I'm separating it is because we can actually think of this as being a linear function where we have Y is equal to uh, M X plus B. And um, the Y in this case is the natural log of the rate constant, the um, y-intercept is the natural log of the collision, uh, the frequency factor, and then we have the slope, which is equal to minus Ea over R, so that all gets locked into there, and then we have the temperature, which is the independent variable, and that's 1 over T. So if you were to make a plot where you had a graph where you had the natural log of the rate constant and you had uh, on the bottom 1 over T, you're going to get a straight line and you're going to get a straight line with this with a line that goes down with a negative slope and the y-intercept is going to be the natural log of a and the slope is going to be equivalent to minus ea over r so why is this graph important why am i showing this graph because this is actually one way that you could determine the activation energy if you didn't know the activation energy you could measure the rate constant at various temperatures plot this graph and then you can measure the slope, and from the slope you can get the activation energy um, for the reaction. And that's actually something that's that's done um, experimentally. This is an experimental way for determining the ac the activation energy with. The other application of this is um, using the Arrhenius equation to determine a k at a given temperature knowing um, a knowing the activation energy and a kt pair and k and t at another temperature so in essence what you have is you have uh, you have k1 at t1 and you have k2 at t2 so in essence what you have is you if you know the activation energy and you know a rate constant and it's its temperature, what you can we can use this equation to do is to figure out a rate constant at a different temperature. So that's what we're going to see in, in just a second. So we can recast this uh, activation energy, the Arrhenius equation, to do exactly that. Where if we take ln of k1, so this is our first rate, rate constant, is equal to the ln of a 
um, minus EA over RT. And this is what I meant before. The most common way for writing this is where you have EA over RT. And I just separated out the 1 over T so that you could see that that was the X. But um, this is the very this is the most common way of doing it. And in this case, this is going to be the first temperature. So we have a K1 T1 pair. And then we're going to have a second equation, which is going to be a K2 rate constant at a different temperature of temperature 2, where we have EA over R and T2. And so the thing that's common between these two is the activation energy um, and the frequency factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract these two equations, these simultaneous equations, and we're going to kind of reorganize. So when we do the subtraction, we're going to get on the left ln of K1 minus ln of K2. And then when you subtract ln of A from ln of A, that goes away. And then we get what we get is we get minus EA over RT1. And then we get plus because minus a minus is a plus EA over RT2. And so if we reorganize this just a little bit, we get um, ln of k1 over k2. And if you remember, because this is a subtraction with a natural log, we can bring that k2 down to the bottom. That's a natural log rule. And then over here, what we can do is, is we can reorganize this a little bit where we take out the ea over r, and we move that out. We sort of factor that out to the left. And we get 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1 uh, on this side. And that's just what I did was I took the T2, which was a, a plus, and I subtracted the T1 away from it. So I kind of flipped that around to get 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. It's the same thing. It just, it just cleans it up a little bit. So this is the, this is the form of the, the Arrhenius equation that allows you to go between a, a temperature and rate constant pair to another temperature rate constant pair. So you don't have to know how this is derived. You just have to know this equation. We have an example here. We're just going to do the first one. Um, we're not going to actually do the second part. I think you guys can do that on your own. I just want to kind of give you a flavor for how you can use this. Uh, so it says acid aldehyde decomposes when heated, heated according to the reaction below. The rate constant for decomposition is 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3 molar to the minus 1 half seconds to the minus 1 at 486 degrees Celsius. And then at uh, 2.14 times 10 to the minus 2 molar to the minus 1 half seconds to the minus 1 at 563 degrees Celsius. So what I like to do for this is I like to just sort of set this up where we have our, T1, our KT pairs. So we have K1, which is equal to 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3 molar to the minus 1 half seconds to the minus 1. And the temperature that that one takes place at is 486 C. And if you remember, we're automatically going to convert this to Kelvin because in order to use that equation, we have to have everything in Kelvin. So this converts to 759 Kelvin. And then our K2 pair is going to equal 2.14 times 10 to the minus 2 molar to the minus 1 half seconds to the minus 1. And our T2 is going to be 563 plus 273.15, which gives us 836 Kelvin. So I just did that conversion automatically. I added the 273.15 to it. So now it says calculate the activation energy of this process. So we have our equation ln of K1 over K2 is equal to EA over R 1 over T2 minus 1 over t1 and this just becomes a plug and play type problem and the majority of mistakes that happen here is just students you know doing the algebra wrong so you want to be really careful with the algebra you want to practice this make sure that you understand how to work this um, in your calculator because that's really important um, so if you don't you know if you're having trouble with that just ask us and we can show you how to work it in your calculator but let's start to plug things in so we get the natural log of k1 so i'm going to pull that value that's 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3 molar to the minus 1 half seconds to the minus 1. And I'm going to pull K2, which is 2.14 times 10 to the minus 2 molar to the minus 1 half seconds to the minus 1. And so that takes care of our left hand side. So what you're going to do, what you're going to do, you're going to plug in LN in your calculator, parenthesis, and then you're going to divide th these two numbers you know, 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3 by 2.14 times 10 to the minus 2, and let the calculator calculate the natural log of that. Then you'll just get a number on the left side, and that makes life easier. 
And so EA is what we're solving for. R is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And then on the left, what we have is we have uh, 1 over T2, which is 1 over 180, uh, 1 over 836 Kelvin minus 1 over 759 Kelvin. We have 1 over 836 Kelvin minus 1 over 759 Kelvin. And then we're going to solve for EA. So it turns out in this case that if you solve for EA, and my recommendation here is, like I said, get the left-hand side taken care of. Then do this in your calculator carefully. You put 1 over 836, then subtract from that 1 over 759. And you can use the little inverse button if you want, or you can do the literal division, 1 over 836. Get a number for this. And then, you know, just bring this number over to the left, bring the 8.314 over to the left, and then you'll wind up with an activation energy. And so when you plug this into your calculator, you get a value of the activation energy, which is equal to 206,000 joules per mole. Or you can get 206 kilojoules per mole. Um, remember, the output of this is going to be in joules because of the gas constant. So we can convert that to kilojoules um, e very easily if the question asks for that. We just divide the joules by 1,000. Uh, so we're not going to actually set up the, the bottom one, but I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. So the bottom one is exactly the same. The only difference is that in this case, we have um, basically what you have is you can pick any one of the two conditions from above, right? So you could pick K1T1 and you can pick K2T2 or K2T2. It doesn't matter. But let's just say we pick K1, T1, right? So in this case, we would have K1 and T1, and we would pull the numbers down. And then we would have K2, which is what we're trying to solve for, at T2, which is equal to 592 degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So let's just say that you brought down this one. And that's what you're doing. What you're doing is, is you're using this equation, and now you have the active the activation energy so you have that number to go in there and you're just solving for a k two given k1 and t1 which you have two combinations above that you can use and the new temperature which is 592 degrees celsius so you should try that on your own make sure you can calculate a, a number for it um, and just make sure you can get the value